So, so we, we, are, we have more people joining. Um, hi, welcome. Um, just want to um, kind of get it officially started. We are at 11 now. Um, thank you for joining the Zoom chat. And um, let me see, I think all of, all of you are, are kind of um, have joined us before, but then with you and Neil, I do this um, periodically. I didn't commit to exactly, but it's around you know once a month, and usually it's the first Saturday. But then because the first Saturday of December is very close to Thanksgiving and also very close to Christmas, so therefore I I switch it to the second uh, Saturday. And if you have any comments, if you want to you know like do any any uh, differences uh, uh, of timing and things like that, let me know. I'll be more than happy to. Um, alter it okay and then um, uh, this is a zoom chat we don't really have a set agenda a lot of times it's for the student to you know if they have any questions for me I'll do a QA. and a um, and then if you want to hold up your artwork and then show it off and things like that you know we can we can share it and critique uh, this is basically to take care of the kind of like the what we call the community that some of you miss uh, during social distancing and online learning. Um, I do have to say that a lot of you uh, probably may have experience of other artists teaching like via Zoom. Um, my online workshop, you know, like the one that you have been taking so far, is not really a live one, but I'm, I may consider that with, with I believe that, you know, there may be enough interest on that um, and, and things like that. So um, today, um, a lot of times, you know, some students may email me with questions and I think that the answer is so interesting that we'll probably want to um, uh, maybe, uh, you know, share it in the Zoom chat. So besides that student, other students would have an idea to, of, you know, kind of like to, to learn about it or maybe even share the, the know-how and things like that. And I do have a, a question from May, uh, uh, May, May Chu, right? Is Ming Chao. Ming Chao, Ming Chao. And uh, she, she asked me about the red ink that we use to uh, put the seal on. So, um, we uh, do I have any other questions before I go into answering that? Okay, all right. So, so what I did is I um, bought out a lot of my uh, different ink, ink paste, or uh, we actually call it Yan Lai, which is... Um, I mean, it, it actually means uh, the paste or, or the soil, you know, like the, the, the one for the chalk, you know, the, the chalk paste, all right? Um, and um, the question has been, you know, like, what, how, how do we upkeep it? Is there a way to recycle it? Is there a way to use the one with they have kind of like deteriorated or dried out or things like that? So, um, first of all, I want to make sure that you, we are, we are talking about the same thing. We are talking about... These, okay, these things, the one that you put a chop on, right? So we're talking about this, okay. Uh, so what do you call that again? Ham chai? Yan lai. Uh, why, why I N N I? Why I N? And, and uh, you know, like with you Google, I, because I mean, because of the language, uh, people, there, there's no official translation, so they translate it the way they wanted it. And uh, the most common one that if you want to find it, for example, if you want to buy it from Amazon or things like that, I think it's called Chinese red ink paste. But of course, you know, like because it's not official, it's like anyone who follows a way to, to translate that that is easily understood. Because it's mostly red, I do have to say that um, I have seen different color ones occasionally. Um, and I can go into that, but then the majority of them is red. And then as you are a calligrapher and artist, um, my my gut feeling is the one that you have probably is also red, but then they do come in white, yellow, and blue. Ooh, wow. Yeah, and because I mean, occasionally I I did see the the um the artwork that has the blue one. I have not seen one in a yellow one, and I have seen it in white. But then the one that I saw in white is actually not really a Sumi painting. Um. I, I do know photographers who went to Wangshan or Guilin, um, you know, areas in mainland China that has really majestic scenery, you know, and, um, and then when you have seen the Yellow Mountain 
at dawn or Guai Lin, uh, you know, in the early morning when the mist is covering the pond and, and things like that, um, they really look like an Asian Chinese watercolor landscape. And, and then I do have artists, yeah. photographer who take black and white photos of those. And then they would use a white um, ink and then would actually chop it on, on the photos. Uh, but um, have I seen it in painting? As I say, I have seen blue one and occasionally white one, but I have not seen a yellow one. But most they of the time... They don't come in black? I don't think they come in black. But of course, you know, like when you say never, <laughs> like uh, there may be yeah. someone who has created it, you know, made it. Or figure it out. Yes, Judy? Yes, uh, I think Sung Suk uses a black ink one. Oh, okay. She? Yeah, as I say, you know, never say never, right? Uh, you know, the, the day that you just said, uh, oh, they, they come in purple, but before you know it, maybe someone made a brown one and made a, you know, like a gold one. And, and oh, gold and silver too. Gold and silver, uh, blue, yellow and white. I have not seen a black, but then, you know, like Judy have seen a black one. So, um, let's talk about the ingredients first, okay? Um, because it does matter how you preserve it. Um, they are made basically free ingredients in this, because a lot of people are like, what was in it? Okay, the redness is mainly plant and minerals, pigment, okay? And then when it's come to a mineral that is red, if you Google and see what are the things that is red, of course, iron could be red, but then iron oxidized, you know, so that's not good, right? Uh, iron is a metal anyway. But then when, when you come to stone graded things that is red, it's actually cinnabar. And if you really look into what cinnabar is, it's kind of like a residue of mercury or something like that. So, so one way or the other is toxic. You know, like the bottom line is don't eat it, okay? But, but you know, like when it comes to those, you know, like um, they they are pretty, pretty toxic material, okay. But then of course, if you if you use the yellow, um, the Asian yellow from the um, of um, uh, if you grind your color and and pigment and things like that, the yellow is actually a plant under the sea. It's also toxic too, all right. But anyway, um. So, you know, for the really high quality one, they are from Cinnabar and, and is kind of a pretty potent, um, you know, like, as I say, don't eat it, okay? Um, but, of course, with technology, um, a lot of things change. It's kind of like if you're into watercolor, the Kamai, um, also came dim and, you know, like all, all these, you know, different things, you know, they, it's not only the fading, but also the toxicity and they are all these, technology that made it better. So um, so as of now, of course, it's secret formula. I cannot tell you exactly what's in it, but then it could be plant, mineral, or stone material uh, with a combination of things that um, may or may not be um, toxic anymore. But one way or the other, you know, you know, the, if your hands has those, you know, wash it and don't put it in your mouth and all of because because you know, like honestly, all artists should know that you know, like when they do art, you know, they should not put anything in their mouth anyway, even if say is it's not toxic, right? So so that's the red element, but because it's a pigment, how would it look like a paste? And in order for it to kind of get together into a paste, uh, it has it need, need to add a binder. And the binder, I think, is called uh, castor oil, so it's a kind of oil, right? And um, and and of course, you know, the higher quality one is the more refined oil. It's just like olive oil, you know, like you have extra virgin, extra extra virgin, you know, things like that. So there are different grade of the oil, uh, but then you do have a oil element. So um, you probably know that when when you touch it, uh, when you go and use water to wash your hand, it doesn't come off because it's grease based, it's all based. It doesn't come off your hand. You have to have some detergent to, to wash it off if it gets onto your hand, right? But that's because it's the oil element, it's the, um, it's the castor oil element. So you have the binder and you have the pigment. So how did it become a paste, right? And the third elements that hold the binding solvent 
and the pigment together and hold it together is is actually a fiber okay and as I say secret formula so um, uh, you know like sometimes they say it is silk sometimes they say that it is a plant called Ai Cho which is um, which is a herbal grass right and um, and I think there are various translation I think some some would translate as uh, moxa m o x a some of them um, would just uh, you know like uh, translate the phonetic of I cho in Mandarin so it's like a i y r i I mean like you know like I I I will um, you know write that down in when I do the the subtitle for the um, for the uh, 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 video but but is is a plant okay what it is 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 the fiber of a plant and and the fiber of a plant um, of course just like rice paper there are smooth fiber there are long fiber there are short fiber and supposedly this particular plant um, when they extract the fiber from it they are not getting all the fiber from the entire plant they are getting only a particular portion of a particular part of that plant and that particular portion is very velvety very I mean the, the fiber is long and sturdy and yet when you touch it is very velvety and and then they would extract from that fiber the pigment from cinnabar and then the castor oil and of course it take a you know like very experienced artisans uh, secret family formula you know like stir it together and that become your red ink paste right so now we know the kind of like the composition of it and of course you know like just like rice paper um, the length of the fiber the nature of the fiber um, how it's put together how men how much of it would kind of affect the quality of the paper so the same thing with this all right so um, so now we come to the second part um, how do we keep it how do we upkeep it? Um, and um, I'm not sure what kind of um, red ink paste do you have, but most of the time you will find them in a ceramic jar. Right? Um, the first thing is they should be in a ceramic or porcelain jar um, because, because of the oil content of the paste. If you use something that is prosperous, for example, wood or a clay pot, you know, or you know, like uh, a wooden box or a paper box, it would not work because the oil element would be absorbed by the container, and then it would dry out the pad, right? So it have to be a um, porcelain ceramic jar. So most of the time, that's what you will buy. Um, I, I have this, I don't use this, so I usually have it to show, show that to my student. Um, if you go to like a stationery store, sometimes you'll see something like this. Yeah. Alright? Okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but then, you know, like why, why I do not recommend it, first of all, it's in a tin jar. And you do not want to put good paste in a tin jar. So why do this come in tin jar? Because these are for either student grade, so it's more affordable, or they are actually not for artwork. Um, if you are thinking about the uh, East Asian culture, um, even in Japan, it's, it's still very popular here. When, when someone signs something, um, be it a bank check or a for example, a document, an official document, uh, a will, or a contract, a lot of time after the signature, they will put a seal on it. Because without that seal, it's not yet official. Right? And those are for documents. So because of that, you, know, you do not need to really worry about the, you know, how high the quality is, the ink stamp, but you do want the stamp to be there. So these are basically for office use or student use or I remember uh, when I um, uh, first um, graduated from college, um, I got employed by a Japanese bank and um, every single piece of paper, even 
a little um, little 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 bill. Uh, all our supervisors that are you know like um, transfer from Japan for a tour of duty, they will have little stamp and then every single piece after they check all the numbers you know sign all it officially with their signature, they will actually use their thumb and put put out every piece of paper and just stamp, stamp, stamp. <laughs> that, that's, that's how they're doing it. So, so these have its purpose. So it's not like, oh, they are inferior, they're no good. No, they're not no good. They are for a different purpose. They are for the office use, for docu documentations, because in certain part of the world, uh, the stamp is still essential. But of course, um, if you're really into that, um, so smart. <laughs> Automatic ink stampers replace that. <laughs> so, so you know, like these are the self ink stamp. Um, just want to make sure everybody can see it. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, I got it from Tyson Sashaki um, in Japan. This is actually created by him. Um, he he designed he designed the word and then he made it into stem for his students and this is a really small one because he also liked to paint on fans or little ottomans and a little you know shakishi board that is narrow for a poem and this would be perfect for because look at the size of my finger this is this is how big the the word is all right so see how small it is okay so this one say longevity I have multiple ones, um, but then this is a self-inking one. Let me see. This is the piece of paper I just stamp. This is how it looks like. One word, All right? And um, they are three famous brands. By the way, I I got paid no endorsement fee. Okay, I'm just sharing my knowledge. So so don't um, don't sue me for not endorsing a particular brand. Um, the the most famous one or the ones that a lot of my friends are using. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, like uh, not other authors, but a lot of my friends, um, we used um, a brand from Shanghai and it's called Xiling, X-I-L-I-N-G, um, Shanghai Xiling, okay, all right, can you see it, okay, and um, this, this particular brand usually come in a porcelain jar, all right, but of course, you know, they, they all come differently. And then most of the time, they come in a silk bouquet box, right? And when you open it, because I mean the one that I just showed you, this one is brand new. I um, like brushes, you know. I don't, I don't get. I mean, like go out to collect them, but then before you know it, I have all of different ones in my studio. But this one is actually brand new. Um, and they are sold by weight, by the way, by the way of the the pace, okay. And this one, say it's 15 grams, okay, 15 grams, so it's the 15 gram of this. It comes in a porcelain jar, and this one is white with a dragon pattern, all right? And then it comes in a little little box, and when you open it, you usually will find something like this. You'll find, I mean like this, this ribbon, it's just to make sure this is in place, all right? But um, now it's made of, um, you know, like the cheaper one is made of plastic, the more expensive one is made of bone, and a lot of time it's ox bone. But the really, really expensive one, which you know they cannot produce anymore uh, because of uh, protection. But in Asian times, uh, they are made of ivory, which is also bone. All right. Um, but what is this for? This is to stir the paste. So don't use a metal uh, spoon, uh, things like that. You can use a bamboo. Um, bone or bamboo or, or a stick but basically uh, they don't interact with the paste and this is this is I mean they look like a little shuffle anyway right so so what you do is when you open it you actually stir it right because sometimes the oil and the pigment will settle and with it settle you want to stir it I, I will open one that I am using I'll show you but but this is this is how it's useful because um, they do come in instruction, but then the instruction is in Chinese. So, um, you know, like, as I say, for the higher, um, the more famous brand, they come with a certificate of authenticity because, you know, unfortunately, they are 
they are imposters. They are brand that because they are so famous. I mean, it's kind of like a brand that look like Winston Newton, but it's not Winston Newton. So, um, so you know, like they come with a certificate of authenticity <laughs> uh, because it's is is a high quality brand. And then these are the kind of like the usage instruction. But but what what it tells you is that it tells you that if you don't use it for a while, um, stir them occasionally. All right, so or stir it before use to make sure that the oil did not settle, okay? Um, and then also make sure to uh, store it in a um, ceramic or porcelain jar, not... You can also share, I mean, as I say, you know, with, with this is in the Forbidden Palace, and this is something that the king would use, this obviously would not be porcelain, it would be made of jade, and this will be made of ivory. All right, so J and ivory, but of, for us commoners, we are using ox bone and porcelain, which I think is already very, very high quality. All right, so um, you know, like you may also see, uh, as I say, the 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 uh, certificate of um, authenticity and also a instruction, and this is actually kind of like a QC quality control mark. And then they usually come in a little box, and a lot of times it's um, self enclosed. So, so this is how it looks like. Let me just show you different ones. As I say, I think this one is 15 grams. I have a bigger one. Okay. I have a bigger one, same brand, okay. Uh, I have a bigger one. This one is. This one is 60 grams because I mean they they all print it on the on the inside, but this one is 60. But I have used this one, so you can you can tell I have used this one, right? And and the same thing, it comes with the instructions and also a little wooden thing that is kind of fell on the side. It can't cut it out, but 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 it all come with a a little little nice box. And the ones that are kind of a a treasure of mine is this one. Okay. This one is 150 grams or, or more. Uh, it's because, I mean, they, they measure by um, till, which is a unit of, um, uh, it's almost like a pound, uh, it's like five ounces or something like that. But but this one, see how big it is? Compare with my hand, you know, how big it is. And same thing here, when you open it, oops, okay. Um, it would have the, the size here and, and then it would, I mean, it would be inside, okay? Now, um, and I also have a little stick to, to stir it and and this is a, a relatively big one. And do you know why you buy a big one? Think about it, you know, like you have the small one and, this, and it does last a long time. So why do you buy a big one? And I have to say that I bought this one together with this seal. Because my seal is so big. <laughs> I need a big stem. Otherwise, um, I, I will have to... Um, Okay, my, my, uh, I'm getting a little warning, but, but you see how big my seal is? And in order to, to be able to get all the colors, I have to do that. All right, all right. So, so have that. And I um, uh, just want to show you uh, different ones. Okay, this is also from Shiling. This is a newer one that I got, and I think it's a gift uh, from, from uh, maybe like a, a art painting competitions. And it's, it's both from from the same company, but then you see my box is so much more different than, than the really nice one I used to get. So, um, and then um, there's another brand besides the one in Shanghai. There's one from Zhengzhou, which is a province in uh, China, and it's called Egg Treasure Bad Bow. Okay, it's Zhengzhou Bad Bow. Okay. And you see that I have a blue, I mean, kind of like one with a blue letter, one with a green letter. Uh, the inside is the same, but this is a wooden box. Okay, it's a, it's a wooden box. Okay, 
And then it's also a ceramic jar and the inside is also the paste, right? And and so the Zhangzhou Egg Treasure is, is the kind of like another brand that is very famous and loved by artists, okay? And um, the both of the one that I have are the same size. Um, uh, the reason why I have two is because one of them is actually a gift from my calligraphy teacher. Um, so, so, um, I like it so much I decided not to use it. So so I bought another one and I'm using this one. I'm so bad. Okay, and the third one, which is also a very famous one, because you're like, okay, besides the, the Shanghai one and the Zhangzhou one, uh, is there another brand? Yes, there is. This this one is also a very famous brand. This brand is called um, Guangxi Zhui Tong. Um, Guangxi Zhui is the name of a person. Uh, this is from Suzhou, which is another province. Um, and this is actually the one that I use all the time. Um, you can see because I stirred it and I move around with it. Um, so so you know don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be flat because as far as um, it works well with the stem because I usually like to stir it up to be a little lump, big enough for my seal. Then I will I will use it. Okay. And um, this one also come in a little jar, and you probably notice that um, they usually come with a wax paper on top. And then, of course, you know, even you try, you cannot really keep the wax wax paper after you know, you know, two or three weeks, right? So after the wax paper is deteriorated, or or after you take off the wax paper, I actually use a Ceron wrap, and and after I use it, I I do this, you know. I, mean, I don't want to bother changing the Ceron wrap every single time, but then I'll, I'll do this before I close it, right? And then they, they also, this one also comes in a very nice box and, you know, like the instruction, the quality control, and also the little stirring uh, stick, all right? So, so it also comes in a really nicely padded box as well, right? So this one is Guang Si Zhui Tong from, um, from Suzhou. And all of them has you know different different gadget different way, but then those are the three brands that I have. And um, by the way, um, I went to Japan and <laughs> I saw some red ink pads, so I bought it too. <laughs> um, I haven't even opened this web. Uh, this is from Japan, and um, uh, and um, one more thing I want to uh, tell you is that um, the red ink is like lipsticks, although it's red, they are different shade of red. All right. So before you buy, you may want to see if they have a color chart so you can pick the red that you want. Because as I say, it's just like lipstick. I mean, lipstick are mostly red, um, but then you know, like um, it may not may not match your face, right? So you want to make sure that is the red that you want. Um, uh, I I can actually email you on you know like the different names, but then um, this one, the biggest one, and. It's called Mei Lai, Mi Li. It's like purple wish, burgundy red, okay? And then the the regular one is kind of in between and depending on, you know, like what company you're talking about, a lot of time they are called, they call it Cinnabar, like this, this sample, yeah. So a lot of them is like, it's called Cinnabar, uh, which is uh, like, like Chinese red, brick red, but um, if you're really into red, China red, it's kind of more like a slightly orangey tone versus you know like regular red so so that's the uh, and there are different names for it I think from from ceiling it's called Guangming right and then the one that I use most of the time not not because it's a favorite color or what but then since I've opened this one I I just continue using this and I'm not sure what you can see it in this in the screen but this is actually a lot more orangey yeah look and how to pick it is really a personal preference. As I say, it's just like lipsticks. Um, you can, I mean, you. Some people want more orangey tone. Some people want more bright red tone. Some people want a purple wish, pinkish tone. So it really depends. Um, I want to ask you guys uh, for suggestions of how to share this. Um, you probably know that I do not um, limit the YouTube access 
so it's not have to have a link. I, I send you the link, but then if you Google, you can still find it. But of course, if you don't know Zhonglao, you would not Google to find it. So, so let me know what is the best way because I do think that, for example, the things that I just share may be useful to all people in the Sumi society. Uh, but then I'm also afraid of over-marketing when people, um, uh, you know, like... Uh, uh, you know, like feel that I'm keep trying to sell things and would be annoyed by the repeated email that I send them, you know, things like that. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, if not, um, I'll probably arrange something for January. And um, I know everybody is busy. Um, so instead of, a, I mean, unless you have questions, you can still call me, uh, email me, I'll still cover it. If not, then I'm thinking maybe the January one would be kind of like a little New Year get-together and and we'll just share some of the things we, we did or how uh, comments or critiques on, on the workshop, ways to improve it or suggestions from you and do a little chat on that. Sounds good? Okay. Alright, thank you. Okay, so I thank you. Um, have a nice holiday. Yeah, have a nice holiday. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.